Hi, Jeff here with another tutorial in the Diva 4.0 tutorial series. Today we'll learn about natural ventilation in ArcSim, and we will run a simple simulation for a single zone for overheating in a design week in um, August for the Boston climate. So we'll take a look at how natural ventilation improves the performance of this simple shoebox space in terms of its hourly temperature profile. So we will be using this space, which is 10 meters by 14 meters by 4 meters high. Although we've modified the windows for this tutorial, so there is a window on the south that is about 7 meters wide by 1 meter high, and a similar window on the north side of the, of the um, shoebox thermal zone. And as with always, the, the positive y-axis in our Rhino viewport is north for ArcSim. We'll be building on our thermal zone and zone connectivity workflow that we've set up in previous tutorials, so you could refer back to those to see how we set up these grass, grasshopper components. I'll zoom in here and we have the thermal zone assigned to our BREP, which is input in the thermal zone component. I'll turn the preview back off and we have these two windows assigned to the thermal zone geometry. Now I'll go ahead and turn on the settings for the thermal zone. I will leave the, the loads the same as we had before, so the people, equipment, and lighting. And under conditioning, I want to make sure that heating and cooling are turned off because I want to run a simulation on the um, hourly temperature profile without any heating and cooling loads changing those temperatures within the zone. So I want to make sure that they're turned off. Under ventilation, I will make sure that natural ventilation is turned off because I'm going to run an analysis on the baseline without any ventilation. For constructions, I'll go ahead and keep the constructions um, the same as our first shoebox tutorial. So we have a roof construction, a, um, a ground floor construction that's turned adi adiabatic, and a facade construction. We do have thermal mass on the inside of our space, so we, we will notice some effects of thermal storage in our model. For the window settings, I, I will pull this dialog box up, and we have from our previous tutorial a low E double pane window selected. And we have some ventilation settings that won't go into effect yet. We will modify these after we turn on the natural ventilation in the thermal zone component uh, later in this tutorial. Let's go ahead and modify the Energy Plus setting. So for the name of this tutorial, I'll call this Baseline because I'll be running a few variants um, comp to compare it against this baseline. And for the results, I'll go ahead and store this in a subfolder called NatVent. Now I'll check the EPW input to make sure that we have the right climate file selected, and we'll use the default Boston Logan Airport TMY3 climate file, so that's right. And I'll click on the settings to make sure that we have the right run period and resolution and output variables for the simulation. For the run period, let's go ahead and select August 1st to August 7th. We're going to look at a design week in the summer, and it's the same run period that we looked at for our previous hourly simulation. For resolution, let's make sure to select hourly. And for the output variables, let's select Site Outdoor Air Dry Bulb Temperature. And I'll scroll down to Zone Operative Temperature. And I will run the simulation. So our output files will be stored in this directory that we've input for the Energy Plus component. And I'll go ahead to Windows Explorer and navigate to that folder directly. So in C ArcSim results under NatVent, we can open up this CSV file, which is which contains the output results. We can open this up directly in Excel. So here we have uh, three columns where we have the date and time, and then we have the outdoor air dry bulb temperature in this column, the first column, and then we have the zone operative temperature in the next column. So I'll go ahead and click on this first cell and under insert line, 2D line graph. I can generate a graph that plots the data in line graph form. So pictured here in the x-axis, we have the hours of our week. And the y-axis is the temperature in Celsius, degrees Celsius. And in blue, we have the site outdoor air dry bulb temperature. And in red, we have our zone operative temperature. Now let's go ahead and place a comfort zone on this graph so that we have a sense of um, where our indoor temperature is inside or outside that comfort range. And to determine which degrees we should use to, to plot that um, comfort zone, we can refer to the, the Center for the Built Environment's thermal comfort tool. So the Center for Built in, the Built Environment 
um, is a um, research group in California for the University of California at Berkeley. And on their website, they have a plot for the adaptive thermal comfort um, ranges. So we can input a prevailing mean outdoor temperature. And I looked at the previous month for our analysis period, and the average was about 23 degrees Celsius. So by inputting this temperature here, we can determine what our um, comfort range is in terms of acceptability limits. So if we look at the 90% 90, 90 acceptability, the operative temperature comfort range falls between about 22 degrees to 27 degrees if we were to just round down um, in, in terms of degrees Celsius. And so for more information about this adaptive comfort chart, you can refer to the CBE's website um, pictured here. So I'll go ahead and make um, a couple of marks at those two degrees um, Celsius for the comfort range. So for the um, comfort low, I'll make that 22 degrees and the comfort high, I'll make that 27 degrees. And I will just, just so that it appears in the graph, I will drag this down a little bit and I will include those numbers in the graph. So I have a couple of little tick marks to then insert a shape. I'll insert a rectangular shape. I'll snap to those lines. And edit the appearance of the shape. I'll make it a gray color and make it highly transparent so that we can see through. And I'll make sure that it has no line on the outside. So you can see that we have a considerable amount of, um, of our zone operative temperature in red that's falling above the comfort zone. So one strategy to mitigate this overheating is to use natural ventilation to reduce that indoor temperature, to see how much heat that natural ventilation can remove during this design week. I'm going back to ArcSim. We can apply natural ventilation to our thermal zone by modifying the settings in the thermal zone component. I'll go ahead and click on settings. And under ventilation, we see we have a few different options here. Let's go ahead and look at the natural ventilation and we'll click this on. So for this tutorial, we're going to be looking mainly at buoyancy driven flow, um, which can be thought of as this, the stack effect. Um, so it's the flow that's a result of changes in, in um, de density and temperature between inside and outside. And uh, we won't be looking at wind-driven flow, although we can check this to, um, to provide a, fl a flow rate that's also um, a result of, of wind pressures. And um, we'll just stick with buoyancy, though, for this particular tutorial. Here we can input a temperature set point. We can leave this as the default. So this is the temperature um, to which the natural ventilation should, should um, cool to. So um, we'll leave the default 18 degrees Celsius. We can indicate a lower outdoor air temperature limit to use natural ventilation. We can just leave the default for now. And we could also um, indicate an, uh, an, a maximum outdoor air temperature, um, so above which we don't want to use any natural ventilation. So I'll leave that at 30 degrees Celsius. We can also provide a schedule for natural ventilation. And for this tutorial, let's just say that we want to use natural ventilation whenever people are in the office. So we can leave, we can use the occupancy office occupancy schedule to drive the natural ventilation. And I'll press OK. Now we also have to associate windows to the settings for our natural ventilation. So under the window settings, as you remember before, there are some ventilation settings associated with these windows. And, and the one that we'll look at um, for today is the operable area ratio. So this area ratio is really the, it's the open area of the window. So the, the actual effective open area um, that air can flow through in our window surface. So I'll reduce this to um, 0 0.25 to be a little more conservative about the actual open area where air can flow through our windows. And I'll leave the discharge coefficient um, and the schedule um, the same um, for now. Great, now, um, now that we have this natural ventilation variant set up, I'll go ahead and change the name from baseline to nat vent. And I will run the simulation. So when it's complete, I will go back to our folder where we're storing our results and I'll scroll down to the natural ventilation CSV file.
and I will copy and paste the operative temperature for, um, for this simulation into our previous Excel chart. So I'll change the name of this one to, um, I'll go ahead and change it to natural, I'll just call it nat vent. And I will copy this and paste it into our graph. And I will select the graph and enlarge the data set to include this variant. Now you can see that as a result of the natural ventilation here in the light blue, our indoor operative temperature has decreased significantly and we're inside the comfort zone for much of the week in the, the first part of the week. Although we, we have some, some points in, the, in the, the latter half of the week that are still um, experiencing overheating. So back in ArcSim, I'll go ahead and make an adjustment to our Rhino model to see if we can increase the or improve the performance of the natural ventilation. So since we're using buoyancy driven ventilation, the height between um, window openings factors into the flow rate that's generated as a result of buoyancy. And the formula that we can look at as a reference for how um, Energy Plus, which is the underlying simulation engine, is actually calculating the flow rate, um, we can go to, in, in the documentation folder of, of Energy Plus, there's an engineering reference PDF. And I have this open already. If you, if you scroll down to, um, to kind of chapter eight, and then there's a 8.3, which talks about the infiltration and ventilation functions for Energy Plus, there is a formula that Energy Plus uses to determine the flow rate um, for the simple stack um, effect for natural ventilation. And it's really a function of the, the opening and the pressure losses associated with that opening, the schedule that we assigned, and then the driving pressure. So it, the driving pressure has to do with the changing temperatures between the inside and outside, but it also has to do with the changing or the difference in height between window openings. And we can have an effect on that window height in our Rhino model. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just make a couple of quick modifications to this model. On the south facade, I'll move the window down one meter. And in the north facade, I'll move that window up one meter. So this changes the distance between, or this increases the distance between um, each window and the neutral pressure level. It, it effectively increases the, the distance between the windows. And so, so that should have an effect on um, the buoyancy driven natural ventilation for our simulation. So I'll go ahead and call this variant. I'll give it a different name. We'll call it nat vent um, window separation. And I'll run the same simulation. And I'll go back to our results location and scroll down to our CSV file that was just created as a result of this simulation. And I'll do the same thing. I'll go ahead and um, for our operative temperature for this variant, I'll change this name to nat vent window separation. And I'll copy and paste it into our first Excel file where we're making our comparisons to our baseline. So I'll click this column and paste it in here, select the chart and increase, expand the data set. And you can see that there was a slight decrease in the internal temperature, operative temperature profile as a result of the change in the window configuration. It's a very subtle change, um, although it is a slight improvement. And lastly, I'll go back to ArcSim and we can, with these simulations already complete, we can read the results into the Grasshopper, in the Grasshopper canvas to um, further analyze um, our overheating. So I want to compare in Grasshopper the overheating hours between the baseline, the natural ventilation case, and the um, window separation case. So what I can go ahead and plug my model output into the load results file component um, uh, from ArcSim. I set that to true, and I want to change my output, so I want to make sure that my zone is selected. And I'll go ahead and change the outputs um, to zone operative temperature. So if I place a panel on the canvas, you can see that the zone operative temperature, there's a, a list for the, the temperature, which is essentially the column that we saw for the um, operative temperature in Excel. It's just reading this list here in um, Grasshopper. 
Now I want to know which of these numbers is higher than our um, comfort zone to get an understanding of how many overheating hours we actually have. So to do that, I will place a dispatch component on the canvas. To determine which values are larger than their comfort criteria and, and less than, I could use a component called larger than, and I will plug our list into this component. And I want to test this number against our comfort, our comfort criteria. So you'll remember from Excel, we set our comfort criteria, the max, the upper value at 27. So that's the number that I'll use for this exercise. I'll set this to 27. And I'll plug in, so here we, here we have two outputs, one um, true or false if the, if the numbers in the list are greater than the input value, the 27, um, or greater than or equal to. So I'll go ahead, I'll go ahead and say um, we want to know if, if the numbers are greater than, so that's going to tell us um, if it's not comfortable. And here we have a couple of outputs. So we have um, a lit, now we have a list of numbers that are um, greater than 27 and a list of numbers that are less than 27. So to determine the overheating hours, we basically just need the length of this list. That'll give us the, the amount of hours in our test period, in our design week, where the zone is experiencing uncomfortable temperatures or overheating temperatures. So I'll place a, a list length component onto the canvas and plug that into the panel. So now we can run through our different we can run through our different um, variants to see how many overheating hours we have um, as a result of the natural ventilation. So if I change this back to baseline, you see that the baseline has 129 overheating hours, and I could also I could also just look at how many um, what the length of our original list is. So how many hours are there actually in this week? So there's 168 hours that we're checking against. 168 hours. And so 129 of those hours in our baseline case are overheating in the week of August 1st to August 7th. Now, if I change this to the other, the first variant that we did where we turned on natural ventilation for the first time, nat vent, the overheating hours reduced from 129 to 52 hours which is a big improvement in terms of comfort. And we noticed that in our hourly profile graph. And I could change this one more time to the name of our, third, our, our second variant, which was window separation. And this is what we saw previously. So that reduces, it, reduces the overheating hours even further to 43. In this tutorial, we looked at um, natural ventilation and how to improve the overheating of a, um, a single thermal zone by using natural ventilation as a design strategy. Thanks for listening, and I hope you'll join me for the next tutorial.